Jimmy, thank you. And Jimmy's story is incredible. You know, she's she's just a fighter. Every single day she wakes up and she just keeps going and she's so positive. And when I spoke to her on the phone, I, I knew right away that's the person that we were gonna help get here. And we couldn't have done it, Truth couldn't have done it without somebody within the fandom helping us. So it really is a true, genuine charity that's here to help. And it's here to, whatever goes in, 100% of it goes back to you guys in some way, shape, or form. It's small right now, but it's gonna only get bigger. And the way it gets bigger is just, it's just gonna end up helping you guys. It's gonna help you get, you know, things that you may not be able to experience before. It's gonna help you get these experiences and maybe we can help you along the way with something. And um, that's something I just wanted to create for the fans. Um, I didn't wear the shirt, but I did spray my cologne on. <laughs> I'll take one more question and then we'll let the most incredible, handsome fellas here up here, Rob, the boys, sing away. Hi. Hi. Okay, so um, was there a moment in your career where you realized that you were exactly where you needed to be, that it was, this was what you were meant to do? Hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the pursuit of anything you love, and this isn't just for actors, this is for any of you out there that are pursuing whatever it is you're passionate about. If you're doing something that makes you happy, you know, then just continue to do it. And um, if you have to have a job that you don't like doing in order to pay the bills, find time in your spare time to, to find a passion for something you really love, art, you know, music, whatever it may be. But for me personally, it was here in Nashville two years ago where I realized I was exactly where I was supposed to be and that I, I had achieved what I set out to do, which was to be a working actor. And that happened in this city, so I'm very, very blessed to be able to be invited here back by, by creation to share this, this town again with all of you. So, thank you. It's all come full circle. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Aaron Wade. Chair. You guys ever get a massage in one of these chairs? Yeah. You go like this and you like have uh, these cushions? I'm gonna say right now, no. <laughs> You're missing out, Rich. Dude, I wanna go where you go to get that done by whoever does it. <laughs> is it is it just me or is this mic really, really loud? It's really loud. Too loud? Hello? That's less loud. Is that better? Yeah. Can you hear yourself? I can no. I mean, yeah. It's really loud, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty. I thought it was just my voice, but then I realized that's not how acoustics work. It's pretty loud. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what to do now. No, you got a microphone. Oh. I'll take it backstage. Let's just leave. Bye. Osric Chow. Thanks, guys. Osric, I know what you mean about the massage chair, by the way. He doesn't go out much. At the airports? At the airports? Yeah. At the mall sometimes? Yeah. I used to... I lived in China for a while, and massages there were really cheap. I didn't... It was the same price for a massage as it was for a Chinese lesson, so I just got the massage and I talked to the masseuse. <laughs> That's awesome. So, That's the way to do it. I made friends with these chairs. <laughs> That's great. Somebody could make a business out of that. A masseuse slash voice teacher. No, they would charge more. That's why you just you go to the masseuse right. that didn't really want to be there, and then they would just talk to you. So. That's good. Yeah, it's a good way to learn. Did that work and everything? I can speak Chinese now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> And my back feels great. Wow, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thanks, Rob. Okay, bye. Clever. <laughs>
So, I've been to Nashville once before and I absolutely loved it. My fondest memory was going to brunch and, and there being live music there. I've never been to a city where that happened, so I was really excited to come back. Um, yeah, and this is not the first time we've been here, I guess. First time I've been here with Creation, so this is exciting for me. So, thank you all for coming out. Uh, I guess we should open up the floor. This is also a really big stage. There's so much travel room. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm Lindsay. Um, Lindsay. I have a really quick question that I'm pretty sure all of us are wondering and really hoping that it comes true. And you've probably heard it a lot. But um, when are we going to be blessed with Kevin Tran being resurrected and brought back to the <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, that is not a question for Oscar Chab. <laughs> it's a question for probably Jeremy Carver. <laughs> um, I don't know, and even if they do bring back Kevin, would they res resurrect him? Would they keep him a ghost? Uh, you know, one nice thing about this show is that you can be back and still dead. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I mean, if maybe they resurrected Kevin and he just hasn't showed up. <laughs> you know, it's like the cameras are here, but Kevin's over here being resurrected. He's it just wasn't important stuff. enough, so you know he's just doing his thing. And, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, would you would you rather Kevin still be dead or resurrected? I would much rather him come back. I, I guess being alive is better than being dead. <laughs> um, I know, but I, I feel like there's so much possibility with being dead. Um, in, in the supernatural world. <laughs> you clarify. You know, there's, there's just so much stuff. Like, in the supernatural world, you have, you know, the live plane, but then you have, like, you have heaven, hell, purgatory, and all these other, like, the veil, and all these other dimensions that you can't really go to when you're alive. And kind of... What do you think he's doing over there? Do you I think know. Chilling with some monsters? I know, hold on, I, I'm, I'm building on the theory, so I know exactly what Kevin's doing. Uh, Kevin is bored, because he's curious, and he's stuck in the veil, so during this entire season 10 and parts of season 11, he's like, you know what, instead of just hanging around my mom watching her do mom things, I'm going to try my best to break through this veil consistently to the point where I'm almost alive because I'm so good at breaking through the veil and I can stay outside for however long I want because I'm so good at it. But I'm still dead so that I can go into all the other dead parts of the world that, say, my mom wouldn't be able to do. Um, so yeah, yeah, you know, Kevin's busy. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a lot on his plate. Well, thank you for pondering well, thank you for your quick question, Lindsay. Lindsay from Nashville. Yeah! <laughs> Hi. Hi. Caitlin yep. from Illinois. No, Indiana. Indiana. So oh, it's the, it's the I. <laughs> it's an I one. It's fine. The, I still don't know all. How many states are there? <laughs> for some reason, I always think it's 51 or 49 states, but it's always 50. All right, 50. There are half as many as a hundred <laughs> states. Canada is so much easier. There's, what, there's ten provinces and three territories. <laughs> What's a territory? <laughs> it's just land. It's a space that people kind of live on, so we just call it like the territory. It's like, yeah, anyways. <laughs> From Indiana. Yep. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Oh, I just wanted to ask you uh, how NaNoWriMo went, because know, you, right. you never told me how that went. <laughs> um, so, I, I did not complete it this year, but... I didn't either. <laughs> okay, well, okay, NaNoWriMo is the National Writing... National Novel Writing Month. Novel Writing Month, thank you. <laughs> um, and the goal is to write 50,000 words in a month, and so you have to write like 1,300 or something a day. And... Usually it's for a novel. I did not write a novel. I was planning on writing a script. I did finish the first draft of the script. I'm going through the second draft, but halfway through that second pass, uh, pilot season started in Los Angeles, and this is my first time I've ever done pilot season, um, which 
as, as an actor, when you're on set, it's, it doesn't really feel like work. Our actual job is to audition. So we're you know investing in headshots, resumes, and taking classes, and we're going in to see casting directors, and essentially we job interview for our job. So our job is to get the job. Once you have the job, you already know you can do it, and it's fine. Um, so it's been a lot of that, and that's kind of, it's, been, it's hard to write when you're trying to memorize all these other scripts. And so instead of finishing the second draft, I went back to an old script that my friend wrote, and I'm revising that one, because it's really fun and, um, and really campy, and it, it's kind of nice to go into fun territory after all these really intense auditions. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I think I got like 10,000 words max. That's great, though. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I think the I idea started like months before. Or I <laughs> but the idea of NaNoWriMo is to build habits, right? It, it, like, great if you hit the goal, but if you didn't hit the goal, you have ten thousand words that you wouldn't have otherwise, right? Because you took the initiative to do it. And for me, one of the best things about NaNoWriMo was getting into the habit of. Any time I had a spare moment, I would just sit down and at least stare at the computer um, with the intention of writing. And before, you know, I would always think, oh yeah, I want to get, I want to do it at some point, I want to do it at some point. And so it got me into the habit of at least looking at the words over and over and over again until maybe I'll type in one sentence after an hour. But that's one sentence I wouldn't have had if I did stare at that computer screen for an hour. Um, so it's just, yeah, I think it's just habits and getting your brain into that mode of doing the things that you wanted to do. Um, well, I was <laughs> I was listening to this Eminem song, I don't know if you've heard of it, <laughs> Rap God, um, <laughs> but there, it was like the first time I ever listened to the lyrics, and this one line really spoke to me, and he says, I bully myself to do all the things that I set my mind to do. I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's why he's done so much, is because I make myself do these things. And so that's what NaNoWriMo was, is me forcing myself to do it. And it's, you know, it's not very pleasant. You don't really want to do it. It's uncomfortable. And so I kind of force myself. And so in a way, I am bullying myself, which is something I advocated against. But it's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing if you can do it to yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. From Indiana. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Nicole, and I just want to say I loved you in the Supernatural parody. That you really loved. Thank you. Um, my question is actually, uh, would you be willing to do that song at karaoke tonight if me and some friends <laughs> signed up for it? Um, yeah. <laughs> really? It's a really good karaoke song, so yes, please do that. Awesome. And I know, I know they have that. Yeah, the, the uh, <laughs> I'm actually, okay, maybe I should say something, but since working with the Hollywood girls, I'm like, I've been like throwing ideas at them, like, hey, you should do this, you should do this. It's like, every one of my fandoms, I don't know if they like that though. Um, <laughs> I've been telling them to do animes, I'm like, you should do an anime. <laughs> They're like, what's an anime? I'm like, no, you know, let me educate you, this is, should watch this. Uh, one day. <laughs> it might happen. Okay, hi. Hi again. Um, uh, staying on the topic of Hollywood Show, there have been mentions of them maybe getting on Supernatural one day. So, sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> uh, lots of the fans want them to be on Supernatural one day because they have done the Supernatural parody and you have worked with them. So, what do you think the possibility of that happening is? I think that if it were to happen on any show, it would be this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, it could very well happen. Um, I, know, I, I know the writers, you know, they kind of say that they don't really listen to the fans, but you guys are so loud, how can they not? Uh, and I mean that in the best possible way. Um, certainly, they've seen it. Um, I'm pretty sure they're at least talking about it. I mean, I would. I mean, if I were in the writer's room and I saw that and see how well it did and how people have responded to it, I, I certainly would think about it. Um, and especially since I've been watching all of these meta episodes of Supernatural, it would, yeah. <laughs> I think they could very well do it. Um, how and in what way, I don't know. Could they do like a, a French mistake type? 
of episode where where Jensen and Jared wake up and they're girls. <laughs> I was, I was Sam, never mind. <laughs> I met Jensen and Misha, and Jared woke up and he was me. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, that'd be weird. But again, if it were to happen on any show, it wouldn't be this one. So, the, I mean, that would be really cool. I think it's an opportunity for for them if they want it. Um, I'm sure the girls would be super down to do it. I mean, they've only really filmed for themselves by themselves, so I think it'd be a really good experience for them, too. Thank you. I also want to thank you for my hug earlier. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to say, like, I love you so much, and <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was wondering, if Kevin did come back, do you think um, he would be a demon even though Crowley kidnapped and tortured him? Or would he be an angel even though he was killed by one? I mean, okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I know, it is. That's what we have, we have cheating. Um, yeah, how about you tell me what you think, and then I'll tell you what you think. Um, I think he would come back um, as a demon, and then use like his brains to deceive Crowley, and then like be Kevin and do something. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool if he came back as a demon and he like did this brain thing with Crowley, <laughs> and he'd be all Kevin-like. That'd be really cool. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, Kevin, Kevin is dead, but he's very. I think he still has his consciousness. So, you know, he's not one to just like not hear things or talk about things. So, I'm pretty sure Kevin knows what's going on. Um, how he'll react to all of it, I think that that's part of the. That'll be a, a fun thing to see. I mean, if if we do ever get to see it, so. I mean, I'm, I'm curious as much as you are. I'll, I'll see what the writers think if they decide to bring him back. Thank you. You're welcome. It's nicer when you guys answer your own questions. <laughs> Hi. Hi, that was completely cheating. Um, Supernatural has become a big part of my life, a big part of my family. Your death was one of the hardest deaths I ever had to get over on that show, and that's a lot. Um, <laughs> However, my question is, since you're part of this family now, since you're part of the cast, <laughs> I may have a minute. Okay, hold on. <laughs> what do you think it's like? <laughs> <laughs> I think it could be the best possible thing in the world. <laughs> I mean, have you seen him? <laughs> no. Honestly, Rich, Richard, he's, he's a really cool guy to hang out with. We, we had dinner with... Um, with his family, like all of his family and friends, because he's from Tennessee. So Richard took us all out for dinner, and you know it was really cool to talk to his dad, and mom, and I, I was I was at the the elderly table, which is nice. Apparently, they're, apparently they're talking about like some crazy stuff at the kids' table. But I was I was sitting with Richard and his dad and his mom and his cousin, and really getting to know them. And it was we come from very very different backgrounds, um, and so. For me and Richard, our relationship has always been, okay, you, that's your domain, this is my domain, and we, we can respect each other's domains in that if you show me something, I will not know anything about it. And so, <laughs> it's been pretty funny. Me and Richard, we bond over like the one, two things that we might both know about, because we don't share any of the same references at all. Like, he'll bring up like a band or a song, and I'll be like, no. Nope. Or I'll do that, and he'll like, uh, or I'll be wearing a costume, and he'll guess something completely different. I think one of the few things that we do know are things that his kids are into. <laughs> because he's like, oh yeah, my kids watch that, and I'm into it, so. Um, 
But Richard, you know, he's he's really fun to hang out with. He's it's kind of nice having a comedian in the room. He kind of feels like the ringmaster. You know, he's always like cracking jokes, and you know, especially when you add Rob in there. It's, I don't know. It, it it's probably exactly what you guys think. Thank you. Um, so I became a film major because of Supernatural, and a lot of the uh, shoots that I've been on at school have been really disorganized, and I was wondering, um, because you have been on you know, a few with the Hollywood show and everything, I was wondering if you had any tips or pointers to like, make those go smoother, or what it's like being on one that's actually going right. Uh, what do you want to do in filmmaking? Direct, hopefully. Direct, hopefully, okay. Um, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned through, and I'm still learning, I mean, I think in any industry, if you ever think that you know everything, you're not in a good place. Um, you're always going to be a student. There's always so much to figure out and find out about. Um, but filmmaking is a collaboration by and large. You have hundreds, sometimes thousands of people coming together to try to make this one project work. And if you can imagine a school project, like an art project, anything, and you're just trying to find five people coming together to work together, you know, even that's hard enough. So when you add like a hundred people, like this is a business in the end, and someone or a couple of people are investing hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars into this thing, and they want to know if if it's going to be made first, like can we finish this project? And so when you have something at that scale, you look at all the pieces and you're like, okay, well we have hundreds of people, how do we know that they can all do their job? Right, and then it comes down to relationships. And basically you hire people that have done the job before that you trust because all of a sudden that one person becomes a known variable, you know that they can do it. That person will have 10 people under them that they know can do their jobs. And so those 10 unknown variables become known variables. And it, it, that's what it comes down to. You're trying to take all these unknown aspects of this giant piece of a puzzle and you're trying to make sure that at every stage people trust someone to do the job. Um, so it comes down to relationships. And whenever you're picking a project, it's who you choose um, that is really important. And so at school you don't really have a choice, um, but honestly part of, the best part of school is that they force you into a situation where you're going to do it anyways, because if you wait around for the right people you'll be waiting forever. You're going through school and if you find like one, two people that you really like to work with and there's the chemistry that works, just stick with them. Um, and hopefully they feel the same way. If you look at any of the big directors, it's the same crew that they go with, so every big director or actor, they'll have the same producers that they like to work with, same actors they like to work with, same makeup, art department, like everything down the board, and they just try to keep the same group because they know how each other communicate. The communication is a big thing, so if you know how people are on their bad days, their good days, you can kind of adjust, it, it just, it does so much for the job, and, um, and a lot of times, just through lack of communication, a project will fall through. Uh, so, I mean, just take Supernatural, for example. One of the reasons why it's so successful is that it's gotten to a point where everyone just trusts everyone to do their jobs. The network doesn't even look at Supernatural, and CW is kind of notorious for kind of micromanaging, um, but su Supernatural, they don't even look anymore. They're like, you guys just do your thing. And, you know, that speaks to, you know, the trust they've built and the relationships they have with, you know, top to bottom, everyone, so, you know, from the boys to the writers to the, to the PAs. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's a pretty special thing when you find it. But till then, I guess it's just, the journey is to find the people that you really gel with. And when you find that person, it's just, it's so exciting. So a lot of times I'll do a lot of indie, indie projects, short films, I'll just help out a friend, just because there's a chance that you'll find one person you connect with and maybe work with in the future. And usually that's enough, even if it's the worst project in the world. Does that, does that help? Did I talk too much? No, it's fine, thank you. Okay, so I can, I can ramble a lot about these things. So, <laughs> hi. Hello. I've got actually more of a request than a question. Um, my daughter is a huge fan of the show, and this is where she chose to spend her sweet 16. So, you know, can you, 
Where is she? She is back there, row WC25. <laughs> Wait, these rows are lettered? They are. <laughs> Where are you? Put up your hand. <laughs> All right. Sweet 16. Well, that's exciting. What did I do on my 16th birthday? I don't think I celebrated. What did I do? I had this weird thing when I was growing up that I would tell my parents never to get me anything. Happy birthday. I know this is embarrassing, but honestly, my mom would do exactly that. And I, and I love that about my mom. It was really annoying. It's, you know, there's all that nagging going on, and like, mom, you're embarrassing me. But you know what I love about moms is that you can get embarrassed for me, and you never know what might happen. And honestly, a lot of the things that my mom kind of forced me into doing by putting herself out there and just being completely oblivious to the, to the embarrassment that you might feel, is that sometimes it works out. Actually, I would say like 70% of the time it works out. And, um, and I, I, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but like, most of the time I forget to say, thanks mom, you're right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad you did, because you remind me of my mom, and I kind of miss my mom now. Aww. I know, but I'm going to go back to Vancouver soon to visit, because it's, it's been like half a year, so I'm, I'm due for a trip back home. But moms, I gotta appreciate them. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot to see you. Um, I was wondering what your um, favorite or most interesting photo op experience is. <laughs> most favorite photo op? Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot, actually. I really like being carried, but they're not, they don't let me be carried. Um, <laughs> this one time, oh, um, a couple years back, this was... Does anyone know Mark Shepard? Yeah. Right. Any, has anyone seen his photo ops? Oh, yeah. So there's a time, he's, he's way better now, but there's, there's a time where Mark, I looked at his photo ops one time, I'm like, he has the exact same face <laughs> in every single photo. And it's just like, mm. and, um, and so I crashed one of his photo ops. It took like twi two tries, but I got him to smile, and I was so proud of it. <laughs> I think I was like hugging his leg or something, and he, and he said something like, you moron. And then, he, and then he cracked a smile, and then Chris snapped it, and it was a perfect moment. <laughs> You're welcome. I think he smiles now. He's... No? Sometimes he smiles now. He's not, he's not so scary anymore. <laughs> he's still a little scary. Hi. Hi. Um, speaking of photo ops, thank you for trusting me not to drop you. Thank you for not dropping me. <laughs> You're welcome. I tried really hard. Um, so I have like recently been binge watching the series, and I think I just finished like season eight. Um, but it reminded me of like when Kevin had his whole like psychological breakdown, basically when he was on the ship or the boat or whatever. Um, I was wondering if like how you got into the mentality of being like mentally ill like that, or if it had any psychological effects on you personally. Anytime you do any, I mean, anytime you act in character, you know, it, it does. You try to make it come from a real place. Um, during that time, I was lucky enough that I was moonlighting on my own project. Um, so there's like a week in there when I was shooting the crazy episodes um, that I didn't sleep for like a week because I was shooting Supernatural and then I was at night I would be shooting my own short film. Um, but I did take naps between like at lunchtime and stuff. Um, but I was kind of already in that mindset. And anytime you act you know, on the day of, or maybe I won't do it. I wouldn't talk as much just to get to that mood because I mean we're all such complicated creatures I and mean, we have so many different types of like places in our lives that we can be at any given moment and so just in that preparation you just kind of mentally put yourself in that zone so that when, when they call action you're not like stretching so much you're already kind of halfway there.
Um, and so that's what I do. And so for that time, yeah, I was pretty sleep deprived already, and it was really easy to just kind of let my mind go a little frazzled. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for not dropping me. <laughs> I uh, favorite moment is still the first time I ever stepped foot on that set it was the the scene where Sam is chasing Kevin through the uh, <laughs> hospital, and, and it, it was so like you know it was weird. I was still getting to know Jared then, and you know he, this this was a no prank day because he was about to be a father, and you know I I didn't really know him. And you know everyone was like congratulating him, like oh it's com it's coming at any minute now. So we're doing that scene, and I'm very competitive, and <laughs> I'll still remember because Jared's got these long legs and he's an athlete, he's super strong. Um, but I still remember this moment, I'm like okay we're gonna run, and you're gonna like okay Oscar, you're gonna start here, and you're just gonna go there, and Sam's gonna chase you, and uh, Jared's like this, he's like all right, hold on. <laughs> And I'm like, I used to be a sprinter. I'm like, all right, all right, let's see how fast he is. <laughs> so they're like, action, and I go, boom. And I'm wearing these loafers, too. And at the end, I, I just turn around, and I see Jerry. Like, <sighs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, hold on, we're going to have to zigzag it. But Jerry beats me in a lot of stuff, so I can take this one. <laughs> um, so that, and then at the very end, End of that scene, the last shot that I did that day, um, or the, it was Jared's last shot, they did it, and then he gets the call, and, you know, Jen's in labor, and he's like, it's happening. He's like, oh, is that so, um, is, is it okay, like, can you, can you finish off the scene? I, my wife's giving birth, I'm like, yes, go. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he just like, you know, says bye to everyone, and, and he runs off and it was, it was just like a really nice and memorable moment um, and it was my first day so can't really beat that <laughs> and then and then the pranking started <laughs> but it was nice pre pre dad days yeah he's a dad and he's not that much older than me which kind of freaks me out my brother's getting married this year and that's also freaking me out a little bit. Because my brother's a year and a half older than me, I have another one that's a year, year and a half younger, and because none of us have, have ever even broached the subject of marriage, you know, it's been really easy to pretend that we were all still teenagers. <laughs> but not anymore. Hi. Hi, um, I just wanted to say that I think you're really wonderful and I'm so happy that I finally got to see you in person. And I would like to know, what is your favorite Gish Whiz item that you've done, and will you be participating in Gish Whiz this year? <laughs> I guess you are. <laughs> um, Gish Whiz item. There, a lot of them are, are pretty fun. I think my favorite one to do was the underwater ping pong with the egg yolk. Um, I you know, I'm like, okay, gotta find a pool, gotta find a ping pong table. Egg's easy. And I don't know, it just kind of came together and once we did it, it was just like cool to see an egg yolk floating in water. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, you know, it's not one of those things that you think about. It's like, oh, I wonder if an egg yolk would float and I could smack it around with a ping pong paddle. Um, but you can, and, and it, was, it was pretty fun to do that. Um, hang gliding, I did the hang gliding as well. And then Elopus, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, Elopus. You cosplayed it. <laughs> Why did, okay. Um, so I did the hang gliding, and I never would have gone hang gliding before. So that was, yeah, that was fun. It was like, they said it was the closest thing to flying that you could ever experience, and I totally get it. You know, it was... There's, we're on top of a mountain, and they're like, hey, take a look at that silo. It's like, okay. I'm like, now what? It's like, it's like, now just run. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> and then we were in the air. Oh, it was, it was really exhilarating. You know what Gishu is this to me? I saw this one movie that changed my life in 2009. It was called Yes Man by Jim Carrey. 
uh, not by Jim Carrey, with Jim Carrey. There's also a book called The Alchemist that has the exact same message, just in a different form. Um, but it, you know, it's just this guy that was unhappy with his life and then he was brainwashed into thinking that he had to say yes to all these things and he started saying yes and all these terrible things would happen, which is why he normally would say no, but then all these wonderful things happened that he never imagined, and it was like, those wonderful things were worth all the bad stuff that he expected to happen. Um, so I started doing that, and one of the big, first biggest things I said yes to was moving to China, and that changed my life completely. Um, so Gishwe is kinda is that mentality where it gives you this crazy task, and you just have to say, all right, let's do it. You know, you don't really think about it, you just do it, and of course it's who would cover themselves in butter and try to hug people. <laughs> but you do, and it's, you know, it's a pretty cool thing. So, yeah, I think it's just an exercise in, in saying yes, giving you permission to do stuff. So if, um, if I have the time, I will for sure do dishes again this year. Yes, it is uh, awesome. Yes, it is. If you haven't tried Gishwiz, who doesn't know what Gishwiz is? Sorry. Okay, so I, I mean, it's, it, is, it is the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. It holds the world record for the largest scavenger hunt in the world. Uh, Misha, he's on tomorrow. He, he kind of runs and organizes it with a bunch of his um, friends. And essentially it's just this long list of crazy tasks to do. Um, including get a picture or video of yourself playing ping pong underwater with an egg yolk. So it's like items like that. And it's, it's fun. It's just a permission to give, you, give yourself permission to be silly. It's, it's, it's a fun thing. Hi. Hi. Uh, what is your favorite scene that you shot as Kevin? Sorry, my favorite... Scene that you shot as Kevin. Favorite scene that I shot as Kevin? Uh, ooh. You know what, I really enjoyed Crazy Kevin. He was, he was fun to play. Uh, I got to do, I know, I got to play around with him a little bit, which I <laughs> like, at the beginning it was fun, but it was, you know, you still kind of, I'm, I was tentative, you know, I'm not the most experienced actor, so I was very tentative and new, um, but once I, you know, second season in, it was a lot easier to just kind of experiment and play around with, like, I know, just, taking my freedom with it, and so Crazy Kevin was a little bit of that, which was a lot of fun to do. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, Kevin's mom, I thought she was pretty awesome, and I think she could have stopped the apocalypse and the darkness by herself. Because <laughs> <laughs> she was, like, awesome, because probably she just, like, in the shop with the car, that she talked to the dude, she was just like, I own this place, you don't, sorry. And I think she could have taken Crowley down herself, personally. <laughs> she, actually, there's this one great moment when she does punch Crowley once. Wait, does she punch Crowley or is that just behind the scenes? I can't remember. No, she does punch Crowley, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Now I can't remember. No, but. she does. Okay. <laughs> it was funny because she was just like, yeah, I'm going to kick Crowley's ass. And she, <laughs> and she does like, she kept, she, she kept saying douche. Like that was her son. <laughs> douche. And everyone would go back. <laughs> but then she, during the day she punched so hard that she kind of hurt her shoulder. <laughs> and, um, and so the stunt coordinator, Lou, brought in an excuse for her. <laughs> but it was really funny. She got really into it. Um, Sarah, what was your question? <laughs> Yes, I mean, yeah, Mama Track could probably take on hell herself, probably. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, well, was that their question? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, La Lauren's great. You know what? She, Lauren got me started playing hockey. I went to visit her once, and she's like, oh, no, I can't make it. I forgot I have to take my, I have to take my kids to hockey. I'm like, oh, I'll just come, you know, and join it. I'll like, you know, I'll come and like hang out at the rink. And I went to the rink and I was watching them. She's like, hey, you want to join? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I got on all, all this rental equipment and I started skating and I felt, I mean, I mean, I shouldn't feel as great, but I was schooling these kids. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't skate, but when they're eight years old, they can barely stand up. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I really wasn't going easy on them. Um, 
But it, for some reason I thought that would translate to like adult hockey, it did not. But it was great, it gave me the confidence to go and start learning. Um, and I'm sure her kids are way better now. Uh, but it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Lauren got me started playing hockey. Anyways, hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ali, and I think you're a, like a great actor, and I was just wondering what made you want to become an actor? Originally, I wanted to be a stuntman, so I, wanted, I was a martial artist. I, you know, I guess if I could choose a career path back then, I'm like, I want to be Jackie Chan. Like, not that Jackie Chan is a job, but, <laughs> you know, I wanted to be what Jackie Chan did. And so I started off as a martial artist, and I went to China to train at the Beijing Sports University, and then I made the Canadian national team for Wushu, which is the Chinese performance martial art. And then my agent found out that I could do martial arts, and like within three months, I got my first big acting job because they needed a Canadian, Chinese-born actor that could speak English, that could do his own stunts, that would shoot in China in rural settings without like all of the amenities and non-union. And so I was all of those things, and they, they had no other choice. So I, <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and so it was a lead role for this Spike TV miniseries, and, and then it just that kind of introduced me to the world of acting a little bit more, and then I just kept doing more acting roles, and at some point, I just stopped doing stunts altogether. So um, it, it wasn't my original intention, but everything I kind of did, in life kind of led up to that moment anyways. You know, with the stunts, it helped. I did a lot of public speaking, which helped in the audition room. Um, and I just had all these random, I don't know, random courses that I took that kind of helped with acting in some way, shape, or form. So it worked out. And my mom, she, she was instrumental in getting me involved in everything, so. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Hi. Hi. I love your cosplays, and I was wondering, what is it like to be both a fan and a celebrity? I mean, I still don't really consider myself a celebrity. I mean, it's... <laughs> you know what the weirdest transition was? When, when I first started on this show, um, I was still going to, like, Comic-Con. I mean, I still do. I still go to Comic-Con as an attendee. Um, but I didn't really know Supernatural or the fandom at all. And so I started working on the show, and then it starts airing. And I remember, you know, I, I was watching with my roommates, and it didn't occur to me, but then I started recognizing posters on the wall <laughs> at the house that I was living in. I'm like, that's Jared, that's Nisha, that's Jensen. And so it turns out that I, my roommates at the time were like hardcore Supernatural <laughs> I've been living them for, for them with uh, with them for like over a year. I had no idea, and I didn't really tell. I mean, it wasn't like I'm like, oh yeah, it's like three episodes on this show, so I didn't really talk about it. And then as soon as it came on, they're like, wait, you're, you know, and we didn't really have that conversation. We just watched it. I'm like, oh yeah, there, there's me. <laughs> and it was, I guess, I, like thinking back, it didn't even occur to me that it would be weird. Um, until, like, one of my roommates, she's usually really shy, like, at the time she was really shy, we didn't really talk much, but, like, you know, I just, like, watch the episode, and I just go back to my room, and she's like, oh, good job on the episode. I'm like, oh, she, <laughs> she said that. <laughs> right, and then I, you know, we started hanging out more, and then, again, it was, like, a, yeah, just seeing the posters on the wall, kind of, like, what? <laughs> Can't believe I didn't realize that before. But it was, it was a nice transition, you know? You, they're still my roommates, and I don't know. You, you, there was a time like, okay, especially when I started going to the conventions, I'm like, okay, like, how do I act? And then it, it just occurred to me that I shouldn't be any different. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna treat my roommates any different, and they're not gonna treat me any different, because we've already known each other for so long, it just doesn't make sense. And so I just decided to, continue doing whatever I felt like doing. <laughs> Which is why I, I cosplayed and everything, and you know, you just, I don't know. There's, there's so many labels that you can carry on that tells you what you should or should not be doing, but I think one of the things that I really like about this show and everyone on it is that we kind of all do our own things 
regardless of what people might think or say or you know how expectations would be. So yeah, it's it's been really fun, but I know I still don't consider myself a celebrity. But thank you. <laughs> Maybe in in this room, sure I'll take that. <laughs> I know. Like somebody said before, still not over Kevin, probably never will be. That was that was a punch to the gut, is what that was. Um, but my question is about the continued Winchester Gospels by Kevin Tran. Are you planning to do any more of those, or do we just have to live with what we have? You know, the, uh, okay, I totally forgot I did those. <laughs> um, uh, you know what, no, that, unfortunately that's, I only got to five episodes and then I, I got really busy. Please don't like bring that up to any of the other guys. <laughs> I'm pre I'm, I don't think any of them know about it, so like, let's just So don't tell Mark. Oh my god, please don't tell Mark. <laughs> you know what, let's, let's leave it at that. This, <laughs> Fair enough. I totally forgot I did this. Um, you, I mean, you can ask around yourselves if you don't know what we're talking about, but let's not, let's... That, that's part of the thing about like really knowing and getting into your fandom and having roommates that are fans. I mean, I mean that stuff happens, so. But it's, yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 I'm, I'm okay with it, but the other guys might not be, so let's just like, just keep it. Just don't, please don't tell Mark. <laughs> okay. Hi. This one time, I made my Twitter a Mark Shepard fan account. <laughs> Mark Shepard was not a fan. So. <laughs> Let's not. Okay. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Absolutely. I just wanted to ask you how many animals you have. Because I follow you on Instagram, and I saw your picture of Ginger, and oh, I'm a cat it. lady. I commented on it, I want to hug, gold, anyways, but how many animals do you have? So I live in a house with, currently, I mean it, it fluctuates, currently we have four roommates, but it goes up to like six, seven, um, yeah. and we have three cats, two dogs, a bird, and a bunch of fish. Um, but we lost the dog over Christmas and we lost the kitten as well, which, um, like sicknesses, like there's nothing we could have done, we had to put him down. Um, and we're also part of this kid and foster program, and so, oh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And so, we're one of the few people that they have that bottle feeds, and, you know, like, sometimes, like, two days old, we've gotten, and, you know, they, they look like rats, and their eyes are closed, and they're completely hairless, and still have to rub their pee and poop out. Um, yeah, before they can even move, so we, we get kittens until they can be spayed or neutered, and then we put them up for adoption, and it, I mean, it kind of sucks because you get attached to them after a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, we, that's why there, I have so many pictures of <laughs> kittens, because awesome. we always get them. Um, and we just got a new puppy, because when the dog died, our one chihuahua was kind of lonely. And so we got, we, well, we got her a friend. I don't know if she likes, likes him yet, because he just kind of follows her around. It's super cute, but I think she, the puppy's too high energy for her right now, so. Yeah, they're, they're really cute. And Ginger, which is the orange cat, she's my favorite. She's... I don't know what changed, but this last week, every morning, she's been like waking me up. Like she'll come up to me and she'll just like nuzzle on my head and then she'll just sleep on my chest. I'm like, I'm like I can get into this. And she's got, she's a really old cat. She's got this like really distinctive meow. It's like... <laughs> kind of sounds like she's croaking, but yeah, she's really cute. They're all, they're all pretty, I mean, they're not, like, fat, overweight cats, but they all eat way too much. Yeah. Ginger's funny. I mean, I guess she, it, it's not that funny if you really think about it, but she's, like, I guess 10 years old, but, like, sometimes she'll, like, jump up to the counter and she'll miss. <laughs> it's so, uh, I know, it's so, uh, it's super sad, but it's, like, <laughs> it's really funny. I, I mean, I feel like I'm laughing at, yeah, I guess she's too old to, yeah. So sometimes I'll just pick her up and I'll put her up on the counter. Or, if, like, she used to have, like, a step stool that she could climb up to. And she's a little bit chubby for the cats, because she kept eating all the dog food, too. 
I, yeah, cats are great. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah. Yeah. Cats are great. Cats, is that? I love cats. Is that, oh. Um, Richard has a cat. I got a cat named Turtle. Aww. I have a cat. Norton has a cat. Oh boy. Oh, I, I know Norton has a cat. Norton got a subscription to Cat Fancy. Yeah, Norton's a cat dude. He's a crazy cat dude. <laughs> How did it go? How did everything go? Good. I really enjoyed myself. Good. How was it backstage? Oh, it was, good. it was just awesome. What'd you guys do back there? Oh man, what didn't we do, Audrey? <laughs> We're just totally like backstage, you know, like, you know, rock and roll show kind of stuff. Hey, Rock, someone asked me what it's like to know Richard Spade Jr. What, what's it like to know Richard Spade Jr. for you? I like the question. Um, <laughs> how much time we got? It's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a roller coaster. It does lots of ups. Tell us about the downs. <laughs> I mean, there's some treatment that borders on abuse, but we don't. We don't focus on that. Not since the court order says we can't focus on that. <laughs> no, it's, 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 he's a joy. He's a joy of a human being. Why were people asking you what I'm like? I don't know, Richard. Because they Cause love I you, think they love you or something. That's, you know. I mean, Osric and I have bumped together twice. Oh, Maybe. yeah. I forgot Cal to talk about we that. All, we all shared a hotel in Texas. We did share a room twice. Oh, yeah. You guys shared a bed? <laughs> Did we have two beds and four dudes? Nope. That was a, a role-playing thing you did later. Oh my god, we did share a bed, didn't we? Did we? No, no, he had a cot. No, no. Both of you guys wake up from fantasy camp. No, no. <laughs> he, you were on a cot. You were on the sofa. He was on a bed. And you were on a bed. And I was on a bed with Jason. We all had our own bed. What is the matter with No, wait, wait. I'm there were four guys. Jason stayed with Jackals. Uh, yeah. No, how, how about how about in Dubai? Did we? We each had our own bed. Did we, we each had our own room. Dude, there were seventeen <laughs> rooms in Dubai. He's so weird. I think you guys are weirdos. You can't remember whether we slept together or not. I can. We did. <laughs> Well, we got to do that sometime. <laughs> what you like to sleep in Richard Spain? Have we all done it? Oh, you have it! Oh, you have it! Keep your bits off me! A precious cargo. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see him tonight, you'll see him tomorrow night. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>
to see. Oh, Nashville. <laughs> this is Jen that helps. <laughs> that was pretty good, your Nashville accent. It was, no. not, it was not terrible. <laughs> she said Nashville. She Nashville. did a Scottish end to Tennessee. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I like it. You know what? I, I didn't That's like. I, can I didn't like being in the uh, the crossfire of your this, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It'll be your turn later. See, I mean, <laughs> Ruth did that, and the, everybody but Billy was like, <laughs> Norton put down the trumpet. <laughs> Um, the other funny thing is when she, they danced together in, in uh, Houston and uh, two weeks ago, and uh, he, had, he was chewing gum, and I've never, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, he was just putting her, he was a great, he was like this. <laughs> I've never seen him dance like that. I was like, great, it's all about the gum, too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your invitation to be dancing is a lot cooler than it actually was, but I like it. It was more of a confused look around the eyes when it was happening. You're in for a treat, everybody. It's an interactive presentation with this woman. Ruth Connell, everybody. Tomorrow night, I told everyone back in LA I'm gonna be able to say I played Nashville. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to it. How are you all? We got a few live ones here. You're my favorite. No pressure. <laughs> I came today with my wee Highland cow bag. Keeps me home from being homesick. <coughs> I just like to share stupid stuff like that with you all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're welcome. And I also have a few little giveaways to do. <laughs> this is a very small stool. <laughs> no, I take up quite a lot of space. I'm pretty amazing. This is, this is complicated. So, who knows about my hotel giveaway section? Okay, so I actually have a step up uh, level wise in the whole uh, hotel toiletry section because thanks to you guys, because I'm on a show called Supernatural, or I was on a show called Supernatural. Aww. Uh, because of you guys, because of the fandom, I get invited to fancy shit. <laughs> so I was at an Oscar gifting suite the other day, and um, there was a hotel there, uh, the hotel in uh, Miami Beach where Sofia Vergara just stayed. It's called oh, the, the Shelburne Windham Grand, it's the fanciest news hotel. So they gave me some hotel toiletries at the Oscar gifting suite. And I was like, you have no idea. <laughs> this is my Mecca. <laughs> so I, these, are, these are like the star prizes today. Ka how do you say this? Calendula? Cal Calendula. Uh, body wash and shampoo. Calendula. Calendula. I've been practicing Manukau. Manukau, that's a whole other story. That's a place in New Zealand I'm going next week. Manukau. How do you say it? Cal Calendula. Calendula. I, I'm a bit of a slow learner sometimes. <laughs> Especially if I've been out the night before. <laughs> I did knock a glass of red wine over last night. And some of it hit, um, hit Rob's scarf. <laughs> And uh, I was slacking him anyway because he has this scarf on and I was like, uh, uh, did you get that from your actor closet? 
And he said, yeah, he did. <laughs> so then I threw red wine all over it. <laughs> show what I felt. So, also, what I have. So those are, are going to be three special prizes. I've not worked out the rules of who's going to get them or why. I'll be there'll be no discretion. It'll be completely on a whim. So I'll have no complaints about it. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, I can open my jiffy bag. Okay, so these are really pretty wristbands. Now these are from my hope chest. I'll take my jacket off. Thank you. I'm gonna take my jacket off for this bit. So you know the Creation Stands t-shirts? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> it's quite chilly here. I'll take this off so I can demonstrate my bit like I do. Um so my the charity I support with the t-shirts, the uh, Mega Career Women and Mother Knows Best, uh, I I contribute towards my hope chest. Uh, and because boobs. So I put my jacket back on now. And so um, Alyssa, who runs the charity, gave me these lovely wristbands. So if you're brave enough to ask a question, because I always admire the people that get up and ask questions, because I know how much your heart thumps. Like you, your heart's thumping just now, isn't it? And as I walk towards you, you're going to get more and more terrified because you know the time is coming closer and closer. And I'm going to ask you, what's your name, where are you from, what do you want? <laughs> My name is Marissa, Good. from Owensboro, Kentucky. Good. And, hey, yeah. Okay, uh, what I want is what, well, what I would really want is a hug from you. But, um, you're my favorite. What do you reckon? That's what I like to hear. I like to hear about people crying because of me. Cheers me right up. What's wrong with your mum? <laughs> well, I really don't know. She thinks I'm completely crazy. So. I know who the crazy one is. You're fine, darling. <laughs> What's your question? Okay, my question is, you know, Crowley kind of always has the beat down on you. So if you could have the beat down on Crowley, what would you do? Like, if you could ground him, what would you do? Okay, so here's your wristband. Thank you for asking your question. Okay, so did you watch the, the last two episodes? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you saw him on his hands and knees, right? <laughs> Licking the floor. I was like, who in the writing room wrote that? Who, who did that to poor Mark Shepard? <laughs> You know, when a show's been running for a long time, stuff happens like Misha having to walk out with his chest saying I'm coming on it. You know, <laughs> the writers are down in LA, we can't, we can't hit them from Vancouver, do you know what I mean? So they think they're safe, so they write stuff like that. So, I mean, so it would be something along those lines for sure. I mean, yeah. But I loved the, I loved the last two episodes. And I loved how Mark Curley Fergus, <laughs> how he came back. So that was really exciting. That's why we all love him. So thank you for your question. L licking the floor, that's how I had it. <laughs> licking the floor. Okay, right, I'm going to come over in just a second. It's a very broad stage. <laughs> If you take a photograph from there, I'm never speaking to you. <laughs> take one now. Uh, right, so, there's two things we have to do today before the end of my panel, and one is the V Club Mega Mix. Okay, so who doesn't know about the V Club Me Mega Mix? <laughs> So that's the first thing. We'll do that soon. Maybe yeah. after your question. And the next thing I'd love to ask you to help me with, if you're up for it, 
Uh, I'm going to New Zealand thanks to the Supernatural fandom. I've been invited to a convention out there. And there, uh, five years ago, Christchurch had a really bad earthquake and they're just recovering from it. And they had um, a bit of a tremor recently. So they asked me to give them a shout out video before I arrived. And I thought, why don't I get everyone from here to say hi, New Zealand? And what I want you to say is, stay steady. <laughs> Are you up for that? And then they'll post it and I'll repost it in my Facebook and you can tag each other and find it all and see yourself. Right? You're up for that? Cool. We'll get to it. We'll get to it towards the end. Let's have an oh, I'll get your wrist burned because I'm not doing two laps. I'm not going back and forth for twice. You see how short my legs are? <laughs> Sip of gin. <laughs> Don't like gin. It's a good job. <laughs> That's all I can say. What's your name? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Uh, I went a little bit Elvis, but he's from a different area. I'm, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm from here. I'm from Nashville. Um, Nashville. You are by far my favorite female on the show. But my question was, did you feel, did you like the way that you went out? Did you feel like that was proper or would you have done it differently? It's not often I'm silent. <laughs> I, uh, thank you for your question. It's a really hard one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm kissing the microphone, I don't know what's going on there. Um, oh yeah, it's, do you know what? I haven't thought of a smart ass reply to that one yet because it's still a bit painful. <laughs> What I do think about the death is the shot of me lying on the ground with my neck back to front is one of the most beautiful shots. Isn't it beautiful, the lighting? I was like, no, you make me look gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people criticize the show for so misogyny and you're like, well, I just look the hottest I've ever looked at the show with my head back to front. <laughs> I thought it looked really beautiful and I thought it was beautifully shot and, um, with a really, I loved Tom, um, the director, and <clears throat> you know, the five minutes before it were pretty pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pretend you didn't rewind and replay that. <laughs> Imagining you were, Misha was not really supporting your back as you were bending. <laughs> so I, I, do you know, is it okay? Can I say no comment? Is that? Is that okay? Can I do that? Because I'm just, I'm not quite there with, I've not got enough perspective on it yet. If that makes sense. Maybe this time next year. You're in denial. Alright, yeah, I'm in denial. <laughs> Adam's not listening. Maybe this time next year, Adam, if I'm invited back. I'll be able to, I'll be able to <laughs> answer the question. <sighs> okay. V called Megamix? Yeah, I, yeah. Now's the time. Okay, right, get your jackets off. Oh, come on. Okay, so you know what the V Club is? Yep. No, not all, not everybody. Not, yeah, that's true. Okay. We're all human beings here, so we can call things by their proper names, can't we? People get so nervous. Vagina. So this is the international sign for the V Club. Children, you can all try and get a Doesn't Don't discriminate. Membership is open to anyone who's pro V. Anyway, we've made Misha the treasurer of the Club. <laughs> and I'm sure Janet and Jensen were like, Can we join them? <laughs> I was about to say something really inappropriate. <laughs> You played my son. I have to, I just can't comment in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so 
And y'all know what makeup comes from, right? Because the mega coven is a bona fide cool idea that just has not been followed through properly. <laughs> it is the way forward. Uh, well, it would be anyway. Right, so stand up. Let's <laughs> quoi. Is it Lemmy Vu or Lemmy Vu? Lemmy I'm glad you're here, doll. Because that guy is sweet today. Right. Okay. So. There's a gentleman there looking really skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've done this, you're all inaugurated into the V-Club, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay, so it goes, ready? You've got to throw a few shapes. It goes after three, and I have to remember to count to one, two, three. One, two, three, and it goes V-Club Mega, right? Elbows right up, that's good, that's better. Shoulders down here. <laughs> Club Mega, and then you've got your disco ball changes. Okay, so it's really cross ball change. Disco ball change. Disco ball change. I'm going to turn around this way like an, an aerobics instructor. Should be interesting. Right, so. Don't you? Okay. Disco. I've not seen too many. I just said feet. I've not seen too many people's feet moving. I think the plural. change, disco ball change, hell yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so let's all have a run through all together, I expect you to pick it up quickly. Sorry, sorry. Nope, I remember blank apology. Right, ready? After three, one, two, three. B club mega, disco ball change, disco ball change, hell yeah. Okay, that was so loud. <laughs> Limper than Cass's trench coat would have went. <laughs> and I want to hear you say B Club Mega Disco Ball. I want to hear it as well. Because honestly, it helps your feet move better. It does. Right. After three, one, two, three. B Club Mega Disco Ball Change. Disco Ball Change. Hell yeah! That's awesome. So good. I'm going to film it. Two, two little shape ball change seconds. You're all warmed up. Oh. Okay. Right. Camera's facing the wrong way. Start. Okay. Right, so I'm going to pan from left to right like this, just so you all know. Oh, there's quite a few. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Okay. Let's go. After three, one, two, three. V Club Mega, Disco Ball Change, Disco Ball Change. Possible. And it's just so wonderful to be this close to you at this time. Like, <laughs> 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 
Ask a question and I'll come over for you to totally flip out. What's it like being part of the supernatural family? Did you fit right in right away? Did you feel... Okay. I do. Okay. Here's your last uh, Thank you. She's actually trembling. <laughs> You can't, it's not real, real, real. Okay, if you a ribby, but I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you, that is so lovely. I love sparkly stuff, I'm such a magpie. <sighs> what was it like? Did I fit right into the SBN family? Okay, so what happened was my first convention was asylum, the first supernatural convention was asylum in um, Birmingham, but not Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> that cold one over there, where I'm from. And uh, the Scottish lady was there, and it was my first photo op. <laughs> she says to me, Welcome to the supernatural family. Once you're in, you can't get out. <laughs> So I, I think I fit to try in whether I liked it or not because I'm pretty intense like that in the same way. And I, I, I was warned, and I mean warned, by the casting department. They said, do not tell anyone, don't tweet anything, like, because you have to sign on, uh, like, you're not allowed to tell anyone when you get cast, it's a secret. And um, for spoilers and all that. And so they're like, don't say anything to anyone because the supernatural fandom will find out. <laughs> and then what happened was, I um, woke up one o'clock in the morning, I wasn't sleeping very well, and I did that thing where I pressed my phone as I walked past because I'm addicted. <laughs> I'm weird. And um, I saw all these notifications, and somebody had leaked that I had been cast as Rowena, and my Twitter had gone <laughs> like that. Uh, you, you've seen that gift. And um, I remember this one gentleman had said to me, don't worry, Ruth, we, we, own, we don't bite. But, well, maybe only once. <laughs> and I honestly had a heart attack at one o'clock in the morning, all these messages from all over the world on Twitter. I was like, and I obviously then was like, it's not my fault, I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you. <laughs> and um, so, it, yeah, I got a real shock. And then I began to understand. <laughs> I began to understand you guys a little bit more. You're all crazy like me. <laughs> Which is why I love it. And I have to say it is one of the best. Um, the show has changed my life uh, for the better. Uh, and then there's all of this as well. Which... Um, Jensen was asking me about the last convention and I was just saying how a couple of years ago if you'd said to me I would have put a microphone in your hand in front of a room full of a thousand people I would have, my brain would have melted but because of how supportive you guys are because it is one big dysfunctional family <laughs> I'm able to do stuff like this and feel happier about it and more confident and so I, I owe you guys, you know you, I, I owe you a debt of gratitude I'm really grateful to be part of all, so thank you. <laughs> Shampoo? Okay. Making the long journey over, <laughs> long day's journey in tonight <laughs> to reach the side of the stage. That's a play. <laughs> that shows is it a play or is it a film? <laughs> so you, do you know you? Yeah. How are you doing? My name's Lauren, I'm from Alabama. And I was wondering... Are you, is your name really? Lauren. Lauren, are you sure it doesn't begin with an R? Look at you. Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you look fantastic. Thank you. Gorgeous hair. Thank you very much. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. You look amazing. I was just, isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> Not just because she's wearing a Romina costume, but you're beautiful. Thank you. I was wondering... If it was just totally awesome that you could become the new badass redhead in the show. Because we've had some badass redheads in the show. I have to say, when I was researching the show and stuff, I um, I was just at one point I always check my hair at the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a bit flattened. 
and Charmaine the back coat it for me. I miss Charmaine. <laughs> she's, a, she's a hair lady. And this is Sabrina. Um, what was the question? <laughs> I was thinking about my hair. Oh, what was it like being the newest badass that had like Charlie or Abaddon? Yeah, so when I was researching the show, I saw this clip of Elena Huffman like emerging from a bathtub looking as hot as hell. <laughs> and I was massively intimidated. <laughs> and then I met Felicia on set. And it's a, First time I've forgotten my lines, and uh, so to be part, hi, <laughs> yeah. to be part of all that's uh, amazing. And uh, my first day on set, Jensen was directing me. It was the bit where I was sitting in the seat, and all I had to do was take a drink and with my eye line, and it was all I could do to manage it. Like three years of BA honours and acting, and I was like. <laughs> and the, the first thing James said to me, you know, looked at me and went, another redhead. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, we're a feisty bunch. <laughs> I didn't say that. I wasn't, I was too embarrassed to say anything. But that was a repartee in my head. I was really witty, but Jensen didn't, just didn't hear it because I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> Sometimes I th say things out loud when I shouldn't. And sometimes I don't say things out loud when I should. <laughs> Does that happen to anyone else? Yeah. Good. I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> How are y'all doing? Is that gin as well? Oh no, it's actually beer. <laughs> How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing? Yeah. There's a lady at the back text now. She's not aware we're talking about her at all. I'm going to give her a fright. Shh, don't tell her. She's going to get such a fright. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, it's okay, you got some important business on your mind. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh. Do you to give you a friend? But I did really, it was quite fun. <laughs> I'm gonna go around this way. Who's next? I'm gonna, are you next? Yeah. Over there. Okay, I'm gonna work my way forwards. Hi. Hi. How's it going? How are you, young man? Good. Hi. It's so nice to see all your faces. Hi. Hi. How's it going? How's it going? Hi. Hi there. Nice to see you again. Hi. There's another gentleman. What is it like being surrounded by this much estrogen? <laughs> It's not a problem at all. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? Um, I'm Erica from Missouri. Missouri? <laughs> how far away is Missouri? Yeah. Where's Missouri? How far away? Oh, how far away? It was a seven hour drive. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for making the journey. 4 a.m. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting to bed. What? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I had an early night. I don't know what I'm talking about. Ask a question. Interrupt me. Um, the scene where you're telling Crowley why you don't love him, that was oh. super heartbreaking. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Um, I'm going to get your wristband. Oh, walking away from you. Uh, yeah, see you there. <laughs> That's one of my favorite um, scenes. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, did you have like any insight to that background? Or, and if not, what do you... Okay. Like, what was your head canon about? So, I'm tuned to the moon. I believe in the matrix. <laughs> I do. And um, what's really uh, fascinating to me uh, with stuff like that scene is that as, Ro as Rowena, I would hold, I would imagine certain things, like the whole thing with Oscar, I found fascinating. How interesting I could love this eight year old boy in Poland when I could love my own eight year old son. Why couldn't I love William? And I was thinking, oh, he's, I'm, his dad must have broken my heart, you know? And I'm, I make up this whole thing in my head that I don't say out loud. And then 18 or 12 months later, Andrew Dab, who is, a, well, he's a, I mean, they're amazing writers, he's a head writer, and his episodes are always jam-packed. <laughs> Great stuff. And so when somebody like Andrew Dab then writes down what your inner monologue has already been, you know the matrix, 
the Matrix exists because <laughs> he's written down what you what you've already thought. And that's I don't know if I did it as much towards the end, but at the beginning I tried to Rubino I saw as being from quite a rough place, but that's why, you know, those people put on the ears the most. Do you know what I mean? And I even within that that speech, it was like, you know, she came from nothing. That's one of the things I think that makes her admirable in a way, that she's she's learned a craft, she's brought herself up from nothing to make something of herself, which is why she really likes um, hotels and pink champagne. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I when I read it, I was like, thank God, thank God I can, you know, we, we, I'm on the same page, and thank goodness um, uh, I get to have this moment, and I, for me, watching it, it was, because I'm, when I'm doing this scene, I'm doing this, you know, I'm thinking about my intentions uh, towards Fergus Crowley at the time, and um, to then watch it and see Mark and see, to really understand how that might have impacted him hearing that, I felt like it was a really t touching idea, and then <laughs> they bloody killed me. <laughs> Toes and um, how wonderful at least he got to hear that you know it wasn't his fault, it was it, the, the, the intense feeling she has against him comes from a great love. I've, I've said quite a lot now, I should move on to the next question. Thank you. Oh, right, okay, so how much longer have I got? I've got time to do the message to New Zealand. Shall we do that? Let's do that. I'll, I'll get your I'll get your question. Okay, right. So I'm going to say I'm going to say what my name is, <laughs> what I'm doing, <laughs> who you guys are, and when I I'll say there's some people here who want to say hello. I want you guys all to say hey New Zealand, right? You've went awful quiet on me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's practice. So, I'm going to hold the phone up like this. Uh, I've got some people here who'd like to say hello to you. Hey, New Zealand! And then at the end, when I say, you know, um, you know, look after yourselves, I'll get you guys to say, stay steady. <laughs> it's not too cheeky, is it? No! Okay, so let's hear stay steady, because it's quite hard. <laughs> stay steady! Oh my god, you guys are amazing. Right, okay, here we go. Try not mess this up. Manu cow, manu cow. Can't pronounce it properly. A bit like that word down there. What was it? Calendula. Oh, no. I'll just get chamomile instead. Okay, right, so I'll just turn the video around. Can you turn the video around, Happy? Okay. So I'm talking to myself on a microphone. <laughs> So we're recording. Hi there everyone in New Zealand, in Manukau and Christchurch. I'm really looking forward to coming to visit you. I have a couple of people here who would like to say hello. Hi New Zealand! And now, uh, hello to everyone, especially down in Christchurch. We know that you had a bit of a quake uh, five years ago and another rumble recently. So we have another message for you there. Sending our love. <laughs> That's awesome, and um, they'll put it on their site and the whole thing, and the whole, yeah, 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 you're going to go viral, <laughs> you're going to go viral, it's going to be, oh, I never gave, oh, did I give her a shampoo, it's okay, I need another drink of gin, <laughs> always helps, thank you so much. expecting that at all. They're expecting me in my bedroom going, I don't know. Hello, New Zealand. Hi. Hi. Thank you for your question, nice to see you.
don't know. going on there. So I used to have this dream when I was, uh, it wasn't a dream, it was a daydream when I was young, that um, the whole of the high street in Falkirk, which is my little town, would freeze, time would freeze, and I could go into all the shops. <laughs> and I think Rowena did something like that at Hudson Bay or Nordstrom. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Ralph Lauren guy. It's very important to have a gown at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Lots of eyeshadow. Here's. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Your, I love your accent. It's so, so lovely. Thank you. Um, but you know, I because uh, I, it said in the character description of Rubina that she seemed to be from a different time and place, and I felt that that had to be reflected in her clothing a little. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want her to look like an American classy lady. I wanted her to look slightly, <laughs> whoa, 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 you know. And I love what the costume department, what Carrie has done. I think I'm really lucky. With the most glamorous switch. Oh, they come back out. <laughs> <laughs> means I've got to shut up. This wee this, this, this lassie over here. Oh, no. This wee lassie over here never got to ask her a question. Go ahead, do it now, quick. Quick, go. Um, Rowena is famous for being extremely sassy and very, you know, just fabulous. What is your favorite moment that you feel like just describes her character? Now do you understand why it breaks my heart to see what a colossal numna you've become? Oh, that's not for you. <laughs> see, the band are cool now. <laughs> not that you weren't cool before, but you're cool now. Oh, thank you. That's me, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. You notice that Mike can't even look you in the eye again. <laughs> I was kidding. I was kidding. Robot Mike is nervous. <laughs> I am feeling feelings. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. How awesome is this? <laughs>
Richard? Robbie? What does that mean for us? I don't know, I forgot to ask. Hold on. <laughs> hey, uh, so Liz, what's, uh, what's on the agenda now? Autographs and karaoke. Autographs. Autographs and karaoke. So hold on, let me go tell Brian. I think we <laughs> So Robbie, I just had a, a private conversation with Liz. Can I guess what I thought she said? So she said? Sure, what do you think it is? Autographs and karaoke. Check you out. So autographs are coming up after that. You're gonna go buy your Loud Swain merch and your Friday People t-shirts so that people know that not only are you awesome, but you rock. And then we are going to see you tonight at a little shindig I like to host called Karaoke. I hope to see you all there. I hope to see you all dressed up and ready to go. And right now, gentlemen, are you gonna play a little ditty? Some walking away music. I love that. Some walking away music. Some slow exit music. Ladies and gentlemen from Los Angeles, California, loud and sway. All right, Friday.